Greetings and welcome once again to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. And the man you're seeing, or the creature you're seeing in front of you, is one James Stewart who has published hundreds of calculus books, uh, most of them containing absolute rot uh, based on the flawed, the flawed mainstream ideas uh, of calculus and mathematics. And this fool, who of course you're seeing again in this picture here, is the one who wrote uh, the famous calculus concepts and contexts. And of course, uh, his, uh, one of his peers is the illustrious Gilbert Strang uh, from MIT, uh, the fool who crossed my path on Psi.math. So both these uh, men, by the way, are gay. Not that that matters very much, but it seems to me that, um, uh, and and this, I don't want this to be a general generalization, but it seems to me that they tend to come up with the most queer uh, interpretations of anything, and in this case, mathematics. Okay, so in one of his books, and I'm not going to harp on that, but in one of his books, he writes, what is wrong with the following equation? Now look at this equation, people. It says x squared plus x minus 6 over x minus 2 is equal to x plus 3. It's a perfect equation. And how is it obtained? It's obtained by taking x plus 3 and multiplying it by x minus 2 over x minus 2. In other words, multiplying it by 1. So all your school life, uh, you've learned that you can do that sort of thing, and it's fine. But suddenly, there's something wrong with that equation in calculus. And in view of part A, you need to explain why the equation, and uh, nothing happens here except that you're given this bullshit that you see in this line here, which is supposedly affixed to this, and that's absolute rubbish. So in other words, what you have is this. What they're telling you there is that you have an equation, um, x plus 3, as you see here, uh, multiplied by x minus 2 over x minus 2. Now, it's fine everywhere you go along here, except when you try to go to 2. <laughs> now, suddenly, this here has no meaning. But this is utter nonsense. And why is it nonsense, people? Why is it nonsense? Because if you have two equal factors, which can only be numbers, by the way, there can't be anything else but numbers. You can't have zero in a fraction, or you can't use zero as a number. It's not a number, it's a placeholder, okay? So zero over zero is meaningless. So this can only mean one, right? So in this uh, very fine article that I wrote on Academia, you can see all the details. And so, for example, um, we tend, they tend to cancel out the factor x minus 2 because it is a valid number, right? If it's 0, you can't cancel it out anymore. So, I mean, you can do everything with every other number, but you can't do it with 0, okay? So you can't treat 0 like you treat other numbers because 0 is not a fucking number, you fucking morons. Excuse me, sorry, I shouldn't have used foul language, but sometimes the stupidity of mainstream academics gets to me in a way that you can't even begin to imagine. They are incredibly stupid and incorrigible and do not accept correction. So zero is not a number. You cannot, you cannot put zero in an equation and treat it like a number. If you see zero in an equation, so for example, if you see something like f of x equals to x plus three and you put zero in the x, it means you're discarding the number that x is supposed to represent, okay? So, for example, over here, if you say when we write f of zero, you mean f of no number, okay? Because zero is not a true number, but merely a placeholder, right? So, what you've got here is this ridiculous crap where, whereby this is the only conclusion you can get. As x gets closer and closer to 2, the expression this expression edges on the abyss of insanity and suddenly out of the chaos as if in warp mode 
a number emerges. If a number emerges because you put lim x goes to 2 in front here and lim x goes to 2 in front here, absolute bullshit, okay? That is total crap. If there ever was any crap in mathematics, it's the crap that you get in the last 200 years. Mathematics teachers, calculus teachers, and mainstream professors of mathematics are absolute morons. And I mean, I don't know how to say that in a nicer way. I cannot say it in a nicer way. I have such contempt for those creatures. I mean, they are absolutely uh, beyond the point of correction. So now, th th this this is this is unbelievable that people can even think that x th that a factor over another factor, which is a number, you know, can can be zero over zero. Well, first of all, if you read this article, you'll see you'll see the absolute nonsense that they you know that they deal with they ask you to find the, the limit of this expression and of course there's not there's absolutely nothing wrong let's get rid of these fools here there's absolutely nothing wrong with uh the expression that you see up here this expression here it's a it's perfectly correct there's nothing wrong with it there's actually something wrong with this uh, in many ways because limits are are flawed they're circular rot they assume that real numbers exist, which they do not exist. And of course, they assume that zero is a number, which is absolute BS, okay? So if you go down this uh, and read this article to which I'll place a link, you'll see there are so many uh, reasons here why you cannot do it. You cannot interpret this expression as anything else but one, okay? And by the way, there's a reason the, the morons need this because in their calculus, um, where they deal with epsilon and delta, especially in their supposed definition, it's not a definition at all, by the way, and it doesn't prove anything, um, they have epsilon and delta greater than zero. So that's why they need this whole feature. In other words, they need to be able to say, oh, um, the function may not be defined there, but it can have a limit. Okay, so that's the reason this BS is required in their BS calculus. Okay. No other reason whatsoever. And so, of course, if you divide or multiply by this expression here, x, x over 2 over x over 2, it doesn't change the properties or the values of the expression whatsoever, okay? And, of course, um, you cannot substitute non-numbers, such as the placeholder 0. If you want solid mathematics, <laughs> in fact, you, you wouldn't have fractional arithmetic if the Greeks accepted 0. Do you understand that? All your arithmetic, your fraction arithmetic, comes from dealing with magnitudes in geometry as the Greeks revealed to the world, okay? The ancient Greeks, not the morons of today. The ancient Greeks were unbelievably smart, and they, re they revealed these things to you, okay? So now, coming back to this here, as x over x minus 2 over x minus 2 teeth is on the brink of destruction, not all hope is lost. Suddenly, out of the... Uh, confusion, 5 arises. But how does 5 arise? <laughs> Suddenly you can't put 2 in there. So you can't put, so you cannot put 2 in the expression here, but you can put it in here. See, that's essentially what they do when they deal, when, when they try to peddle this bullshit to you. Do you understand? This limit bullshit. That's exactly what they're trying to peddle to you. There's nothing else to it. Okay, so look. I've got a little worked up in this video. Um, I can stand idiots, as you can, as you all well know. But um, if you're not already a subs subscriber to my channel, please become one. Uh, tell your friends about it. Contribute at my GoFundMe channel, to which I'll place a link. And I'll try to give you different perspectives. But please read this article. It's a very enlightening article. And I'll talk to you again hopefully in the near future. My name is John Gabriel.